Hello and welcome along to a, another Susty Talk ED series of video interviews designed to keep us all feeling connected to sustainability leaders and to each other throughout lockdown um, and beyond. I'm really delighted to have Natalie Campbell on the line, who is the new co-CEO of Bellu Water. I say new, but since March, right, Natalie? Yeah, yeah. Um, it still feels very new, though. And um, I actually joined as CEO and made some changes, which mean I am now co-CEO, but we can come on to that later. Yeah, of course. So it would be great to hear a little bit more about how and why you came came into that position. So a bit about your, your career to date. Yeah. So I started my first business at 19 and in my last year of university uh, at 21, I opened a retail franchise. So I consider myself um, a forever entrepreneur. And as I moved into my career, realized that actually I was a social entrepreneur because I, as much as I understand the need to make money, making money for making money safe never really appeals to me. Actually, the difference that I could make um, for someone else, for another person's life or within a community or for the environment was was more important. And so I built a career pretty much on those principles. Um, I started an agency called A Very Good Company in 2011. And back then people were like, well, why would you call your business a very good company? <laughs> um, and I said, yeah, it does, it's, it does what it says on the tin style, style name. We help businesses to think about the good that they do, the impact they have in the world, how they bring the communities that they should be serving along the journey of designing services, looking at systems change, looking at um, campaigns. And we worked with Marks and Spencer, Virgin Media, Channel 4, um, W Hotels on a whole suite of, of initiatives that I'm proud to say still run today. Fantastic. And then what about the co co CEO ship? So how does that that play into this um, purpose led business model? Um, so in my journey of looking at how to do business differently and business with purpose, I've always been struck by the idea that there's one way to lead, that you have a heroic, you know, off the fly off the top of the mountain style leader, you know, very masculine attributes, and it can only be one person and everyone follows behind. And I've just always rejected that idea because when I've had the most interesting career experiences or life experiences, it's usually because a group of people have come together and bounced off each other to mm -hmm. make something happen. Even think about cooking a meal, you know, when everyone is making their best version of, of a dish and putting it on the table, that's the best sort of dinner that you can ever have as opposed to one person cooking slaving away and not enjoying it so for me it's the same thing within business when I started Charlotte was co um, uh, chief operating officer mm -hmm. and I thought you know we've got two women here uh, a business of nine people ambitions we want to massively scale what we're doing let's co-CEO there's no point in having a constricted hierarchy just because that's the way people think we should run businesses. So I sort of said to Charlotte one day, fancy being CEO. And she sort of said, you know, why would you want to do that? And exp I explained my rationale that we are co-founders of the next 10 years of the business. Mm -hmm. We're about to design our new purpose statement. And I wanted to do it in partnership with her and with the team. And so it felt like a natural next step as uh, we evolve and when we grow and we scale. Mm -hmm. Fantastic and obviously that's been a big change for the business but obviously every business has been through big changes um, in 2020 purely because it is 2020 <laughs> and obviously um, Bellu does water and we've seen a lot of surveys about water sales fluctuating with lockdown restrictions coming on and back. We're all at train stations and airports um, a bit less. We're probably at hotels um, a bit a bit less. So how do you approach purpose purpose led business and profitability against that sort of landscape? Yeah. So it was one of the first questions that we had and um, where I got to with the team was that actually right now we cannot control the financials within this business. So let's just say there are zero sales between now and September because that was our sort of finger in the sky. This is how long it might last for. How do we structure the business to survive that? Um, we were in a, a strong financial position, um, which meant that we could 
work with our partners and supply chain to manage cash flow really effectively. And what was more important than being a, in a strong financial position was just communicating with people. You know, we had supply chain um, vendors that owed us money and likewise we owed money on, but everyone just started to communicate about what was realistic, what was feasible. So that was the first thing that, that got us through. The next thing was then saying, OK, what does recovery look like and do we want to be the same business? Do we want to be slightly different? And so we put in place um, what was a short term framework, the four piece framework, which has become our long term framework of purpose, people, product and profit last. Baloo's model prior to that was profit first, and it was about giving water aid a million pounds annually every single year. And that was the North Star of the business. Mm -hmm. And that is still so 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 key to, to who we are but actually us taking back our purpose and saying it's broader and the statement that we've broadened it to is we exist to change the way the world sees water by 2030 that means we can bring all of our environmental activity in back into the business it means that we can put water raid front and center and we can double down on the fact that the business was started to think about water in a different way um, Reed Paget, who was the original founder, started the business because he was annoyed at the fact that he would go out to uh, go out to each, um, be on the go, and pick up a bottle of water that had been shipped in from another right. country. He's like, why would we do that when we have perfectly great mineral water right here? If mineral water is the option that you want to have, and so we really just asked ourselves the existential questions as you do. Um, you know, we had the gift of time to do so. And I think we've come out of the other side with a 10 year horizon, a clear strategy, a clear North Star. Um, we've doubled down on our partnerships that enable us to deliver our purpose. And then we've aligned everything we want to do with people, our product, and then ultimately return to profitability. Uh, we've aligned that to the, the way that we live and, and breathe. And so we think about it, but it's not sort of the first thing we think of, you know, first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Got you. And we've we've had a couple of pieces of research about purpose-led business coming in. We've had a few declarations from various trade bodies. So are you noticing a broader trend outside of Bellu towards purpose-led business off, after lockdown? So I think it's been a trend that's been, it's been here. So when I started a very good company, we were a purpose-led business. Um, and or you know, people using mission-led business, obviously that social enterprise was established. And I just feel now, I don't think there are many people that start a business today and think just about making money or think about creating a business just to exit it and make lots of money for themselves. I think everyone realizes you know, when you look around, there's just more, there's more than just making money. And mm -hmm. I think the gift of coronavirus has been, it doesn't matter how much money you have, actually something could happen that changes your life overnight so why not make more of the time that you have um on this earth it's also highlighted the fact that um you know the, the basic thing that we all needed to do to protect ourselves are you washing our hands was not a privilege was not a um a, a, a basic right that everyone has access to around the world which for us it really put front and center why our partnership with WaterAid is is so important. One in ten people do not have access globally, do not have access to clean water. So when we're saying you know, wash your hands, okay, what about the 785 million people that cannot do that? Um, I think people now start to get that and what it means and connecting products to delivering change for those 785 million people. People now understand why that's so important. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch a bit more on that partnership with WaterAid as as well, because we've covered some of their work on washing COVID, but they're also doing a really big push for like climate finance for wash and, and water ahead of COP26, which is really helping to raise the profile um, of, of that issue. And we work with a lot of brands that might have a charity partnership or might be looking for one. Um, so what what makes a good charity partnership? What's your what are your key learnings from from that? purposeful and values alignment. Um, and I, the, the brands that I see doing this well, you know that they've thought about who they are, what they do, how they operate, and what the best partnership for them is. The ones where you're a bit like, why, why, why 10% <laughs> to that organization? It's where you can see there's probably a disconnect between 
how that business shows up and the actual charity. So the first thing is, is, you know, think about purpose, think about alignment. It should be so easy to work together that you don't need big strategic documents and MOUs and SLAs and all of the sort of the big governance things because you just can't help but work together, which is um, thankfully what we've got with WaterAid. I think also being realistic about what the partnership looks like. So yes, there's a financial partnership, but there's also the partnership of time. There's the partnership of networks and connections. There's the partnership of thought leadership. There's so much more impact that a business can have beyond the money that it gives the charity. But money is obviously important for a charitable organization to do the things that, that it wants to do. And I think finally, it's really investing in listening both ways. I've often found, especially when I was at a very good company, there's been a language disconnect between private sector businesses, fast growth businesses, tech businesses, and the charitable sector. We Basically, we don't speak the same language. And so actually taking the time to listen to each other so that the outcomes that you want to achieve really are the same. Um, and then it's being quantified in a way that makes sense for both businesses. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a lot of it then just comes down to communication, communication. Everything is communication, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, um, just as a last question for you today, Natalie, we're asking everyone that comes on our interviews as we approach the end of the year for their New Year's resolution. I'm, I'm not talking about drinking more smoothies or or trying keto. I mean, your sustainability related um, professional um, resolution. You outlined what the business is going to look like sort of 2021 um, and beyond, but how about on a personal level for yourself? Wow. Uh, my personal business resolution will probably be to do less, but with more impact. It's a dream, isn't it? <laughs> The, that that is literally literally the dream. Um, and to extrapolate, I've had a a long and, and busy career of doing lots of things with lots of impact, and now I, I'm thankfully in a position where I can do a smaller portfolio of things and actually have bigger, broader impact. So I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic. Well, Natalie, what a great note to end on. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you.